that is very dodgy. Welcome to the Girls With Power Tools channel. Maybe not. I've bought a Stuart McDonald safety planer, which is this thing here. Now, it's a glorified router bit, really, that is used to plane down the surface of wood. It's about, I think they say it's about two and a half inches. And you can um, reduce the thickness of wood, plane it to length. It, it's, it's a cheap planer thicknesser, if you like. I guess the reason it's called a safety planer is because of the way the blades are mounted in that you can't actually get at them from the side. Well, not unless you start sticking your fingers under, underneath the rim. I've, I've seen actual router bit versions of these which maybe have been outlawed. They look lethal because you've got exposed blades and oh dear, uh, yeah, <laughs> that sort of stuff would frighten me. But this looks all right. Now, it comes with a whole load of instructions and the first thing it talks about is making an auxiliary table. Now the Stu Mac video, which I'll put a link to, um, shows the use of this table but not the building of it, which is fair enough. I don't think it's a particularly difficult build but it's what I'm going to do now. But the thing that's not mentioned in that video is they're using a much more expensive pillar drill. This is a really cheap pillar drill, it's about the cheapest I could find. It's a silver line pillar drill and it came with a few problems. If you've seen the, uh, the unboxing video I did of this, it didn't work to begin with. I had to actually repair it. But this doesn't have a locking mechanism. You can wind it up and down and that's it. So I've been scratching my head as to how to do a height adjustment on this and hold it in place. And I think I've come up with a solution which I'll try in this video and hopefully it will work. I've seen more complicated uh, solutions online uh, on YouTube of people making platforms that are, are height adjustable with, with a micro adjuster. And I, I think it's over engineered for what we want. I'd rather adjust the height of the, the bit in, in the drill. And I think I can do that. So I'll build the table, it shouldn't take very long, and then I'll put it through its paces and we'll see what happens. I have this sheet of MDF which is a third of a larger sheet that I bought in my local DIY. Stuart McDonald recommend using pattern makers plywood. I guess what they want is something that's absolutely flat. Well this MDF is absolutely flat but I can feel that it, it does flex slightly. It's 19 millimeters thick so there's not much flex. If if this proves to be a problem in I will try to reinforce it on the back in future but for now I think that will do certainly um, for my initial forays into planar thicknessing. So the first thing I've got to do is drill this all up and recess some carriage bolts into it to attach it to the platform. This is a little precarious at the moment. <laughs> There's a word of warning. <laughs> I've got the depth gauge now on absolutely full extent. Um, it's at the bottom of its travel and it's not far enough so I've got to raise the platform. Uh, which means getting it all adjusted again, so oh, dearie me, I really should have given myself more working room, but it's such a long bit, that's the trouble, there's not much, not much play. <laughs> oh dear, right, here we go. I'm really fussy about MDF dust, it's apparently really bad stuff, there's all sorts of formaldehyde and urea, well it's urea formaldehyde or something, but it's, you shouldn't be breathing it in, so lots of uh, extraction. Right, that's that one, do the other one. I've had to put a call underneath because the bottom of the table is corrugated. 
and the clamp just won't it won't clamp to that so I've had to create a little call to go underneath the table right I think I think I'm there I'll just have to uh, square out the hole inside so the, ca the carriage bolt goes fully in. It's quite uh, surprising how soft the inside layers of MDF are. It really is just fibre, as you'd expect. The surface layers are far more compressed. The inside of MDF is really quite soft. One table with nicely recessed bolts. So the next thing is the fence. So I'm going to use this piece of pine and cut it, I guess, to the length of the table. And I'm going to have to put a hole here for it to pivot. So we can, do, we can have it pivoting like that and then we can clamp it at this end. One table with a fence that I can clamp down. I think I'll probably take a chunk out of there so I'll push the fence a bit further back but we're going to cut a lump out here um, so the bit can go really low for fine work and just stick a little bit out the front here. Um, so that's one thing we'll do. The next thing though is to get this table absolutely flat and Stumac suggests a rather good method of doing that. So let's create a little tool a coat hanger. The idea is I'm going to create a little wire section that uh, sticks out about here and the idea is if we can set the table so that it's the end of the wire is on the table here and then rotate it it should still be on the table over here. One piece of bent coat hanger and the idea is we pop that in the in the chuck. So that's a whisker above the table on that side, and a whisker above the table on that side. So that is flat. I'm rather pleased with that, and it's it's level that way as well. That way I've got no control over, it's down to how this is engineered, but this way I have control. But it is nicely, nicely levelled. Stumac recommend a speed of no more than 3000 RPM. Now this drill goes up to 2560 with its top gearing. Now I've never changed the gearing on this before, so this is a new experience. But in theory, if I take the band mm, now, yeah, I'm going to have to slacken the tension off. I was hoping there'd be a fine adjustment of the tension, but I think, in fact, it, it just... Yeah, it's just a, a manual thing that it just... The motor just swings in and out. So it's not easy to take the tension off, actually. Just got to pop the band down. There we go. And then pop it up on the other side. Oh, there we go. And then somehow tension that and lock it off. That's a very crude tensioning mechanism. I guess that, that's there. So that should be now 2560 RPM. And of course if I try to start the drill, I can't because the lid's open. And this is the problem I ran into when I bought this drill. When you close the lid, oops, a micro switch is thrown, and you can you can start the drill. And when I bought it, the little trigger on the micro switch had broken off, and uh, it took me ages to find out why. So let's 
Let's get this mounted. And I'm hoping I've got that centered. Let's see whether there's any vibration. That is very dodgy. This screws in. Wow, I'm glad I caught that on camera. This screws in, which is fine when it's going because it's trying to tighten itself up. But when you stop the motor and the motor stops suddenly, the inertia completely unscrewed this. Now, I think that's, I think that's awful, but really dangerous, but oh dear. I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to just make sure it's really tight. Which way? I can't remember which way it screws in that way. I guess that once it's been used a few times it, it will tighten up and it won't do that. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's okay that time. I guess it was just a little bit loose. Wow. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Now, as, as it is at the moment, this won't go down all the way because of my depth gauge. And this is where my idea about how to set the depth and fix it comes in. It's all to do with this depth gauge. There are two screws on here, two bolt, uh, two nuts, sorry. And this whole bar, I think, screws out. We're about to find out. My plan is to get this nut here below the bottom of the chassis and this nut above it, and we can lock the up-down motion of it and use the, the nuts to set the height so we're not trying to wind it down and then lock it. Let's see if that works. Well, this is a cheap drill, and <laughs> this is just finger tight, rather amazingly. So if we take this flag off the top, how do we do that? There we go. I can just unscrew that. So now the idea is come off that end? No it won't. Oh that's a shame. The nut won't come off that end so this is where it's going to get a little bit fiddly. Somehow I've got to get that bolt up through there. Will that work? It will. So we can take the bolt off the, the nut off the top. Yeah at least that works. Yay! There we go. Oops, and that underneath has dropped out. That's okay. This is where I need a second pair of hands, really. Oh, I'm getting horribly greasy here. I hate getting greasy. I don't mind doing woodwork, but I really don't like doing engineering. Yeah, this is going to be troublesome. Somehow I've got to get this tight. Doesn't help having my hands covered in grease. with spanners man. Let me 
I say smell? I'm mumbling. I'm muttering. I mean pliers. Yep. So now we can set the depth and hold it there. back on. So my depth gauge is now working in reverse. We've still got the ability to limit how far down it goes, but now we can limit how far up it goes. Bingo. I'm liking this. Right, Stumac had um, a cutout in, in their guide, but their guide was a lot wider and it, 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 I think it didn't. It wasn't a semicircle. The, the the opening was quite narrow, just to allow this to peek out. I don't want to do that. I might have to have another guide if I want to do some fine work. But I do want to get this guide back beyond the edge of the planer. And to do that, I need to put a cutout here so that it will move around the post. And I'm going to start that using the planer. So I'm just going to set the height. And this will be my first bit of planing. I don't think I'm going to be able to plane right through the guide, but at least it will show us the cutout that I need to make to put it here. I'm working on the assumption that that bolt is... Oh, let, let's just do it. <laughs> I just want to plane something, and I think this, this is an appropriate use, I think. Right, let, let's see what happens. I'll get my vacuum cleaner. resulting cut. It's quite quite neat and tidy. Obviously this isn't how you would normally use it. You'd be using it to plane straight across. But I just wanted to create a little cutout that will sit against the sit against the, the post over there. Now let's test this in anger. I've got my Dyson vacuum cleaner taped to the back here. They Stumac insists that you should have proper extraction, get yourself a a drain pipe or something. I might have a look for, for something appropriate to fit on here. Uh, but there's not much room because this is a very small pillar drill. They're, the one they were using was much bigger and there's a lot more room for things. I'm going to try and plane down the front of this, which is very rough, and see if we can get a nice smooth surface. So I've got to set the, the depth appropriately. So let's use our micro adjuster. And I'm going to set it just so that it's making contact and see if we can take off the minimum yeah so let's take that a little higher see how subtle we can be about this see if we, see if we can just take see if we can just take a whisker off to begin with now I would need a push stick I, I've packed this because the, um, I'm going to have to work out what I'm going to do with the fence. Whether to take a big chunk out of the fence. Um, I'm going to be mostly using it for thin materials. So here I've just packed out the the bed so that um, I'm I'm above the light, the the height of the fence. I'm I'm not going to use a push stick because I'm just going to feed it in as far as that cut out. But normally use a push stick. And I've got this clamped down and I've got the fence clamped down. So let's see what happens. Vacuum on. <laughs> That 
first pass just touched the end of it so we'll lower it down a smidge about half a thread width there we go let's see I will use the push stick actually just to apply downward pressure let's go again Go down another smidge. I could probably be less subtle than this, so we're going to rotate that half a turn. I just want to see, just want to see how fine an adjustment we can we can make on this. Okay, there are some tooling marks in there. You can see a slight rim there, but that is really quite quite good. I wouldn't use that as the final finished surface, but it's certainly pretty flat. So this is looking good. So this is the result. You can see some tool marks in that, but this is soft pine. Maybe it's better on hardwood. But I'm quite pleased with that. That will certainly be very useful for thicknessing pieces of wood before final finishing. So result, yay!